This was a short ad run back in 2015. Since then the subject has not really been brought up or addressed properly. So much has gone on lately that this subject just kind of got overlooked but considering the growing issue across the country I think this issue should be addressed and evaluated by the CDC. Anyone who has visited San Francisco in the past five years I'm sure remember having an encounter 
or seeing the vicious carnivorous seagulls and the strung-out looking pigeons that look like they've been on a binge with their feathers all puffed out, and the wild crazed look on their face. Many just dismissed it as some sort of junky birds that stole some crackhead stash, but then came the vicious seagulls that looked even crazier, and they would swoop down and devour these pigeons right in front of everyone, and eat them alive. Here is an article on this, when most people think of pigeons, the common city street bird comes to mind, but there's a different kind of pigeon in California, and it's at risk, according to environmental scientists. Most of the Pacific Coast band-tailed pigeons are dying specifically between San Francisco and San Diego. The stocky, reclusive bird is the state's only native pigeon. Its head is a beautiful purple accompanied by a yellow bill and legs. Environmental scientists at the California Department of Fish and Wildlife have identified a parasite as avian trichomoniasis, an organism that lives in the throat and mouth of the infected bird, which prohibits them from eating. Dr. Jennifer Scarlett with the San Francisco SBCA said the street pigeon is thought to be the main source of infection for the bird. That was in 2015. Now we seem to be facing an egg shortage and inflation in prices because of this avian bird flu but also I remember hearing of a strain of this avian bird flu that was being called the zombie virus that was only infectious to birds. And looking at the carnivorous appetite of the seagulls here I think that's what we are dealing with. Even worse though are these people out there that are addicted to this fentanyl. These people you see bent over with their ads cracks hanging out, somehow still standing and hovering over the ground. Their eyes glazed over, non-responsive and most end up needing Narcan to bring them back from overdosing. With some all it takes is one hit, inhale it once and bam, they're dead seconds later. But I'm starting to wonder, is it really this drug that is causing this or has the avian zombie strain made a crossover and is infecting these people who are most likely to contract such a virus if it ever occurred because they are homeless, open, and exposed to infection easily? Inquiring minds want to know but if this is true then it's already spread across the globe as there have been reports of this coming in from across the world and we are only becoming aware in the aftermath. Also included is that here recently the CDC released a statement about some contractable respiratory infection that causes spot-like rashes to develop within the lungs and trachea. I myself may have recently had this infection as it triggered a seasonal bronchitis episode that I had not experienced in many years as well as pneumonia and hypothermia-like symptoms to occur. Because of my previous injury from the car accident that put me in a coma from what I have become most certain after researching the subject was a brain aneurysm that blew out my vein in my temple. This time, however, because of the coughing and respiratory infections. That whiplash spot on my neck swelled up again, and this time when it burst I saw a kaleidoscope of colors, and it was the bride of heaven this time that witnessed what occurred. I had asked her to come over to the bed and to ask through her faith that I had helped her regain, to ask that God come and take from me this illness. And she was given an answer quickly. I remember when he spoke to her through me that it was like a bright light had covered most of my vision. He said to her, this is my son. What he said was true for he is the resurrection. Tell me, my child, why have you asked that he be healed? She did not flinch with fear in his presence as most have. She stopped crying and said because I love him, and I don't want to lose him. And God said, Then may you be blessed, my child, for your words are like a blessing to me, and so thus you are blessed. And with that I felt a hand like that which I felt during the exorcism with Moloch, and I felt something within me being ripped out, and there were dark spirits driven from me, and from the base of my spine came forth a hooded-like specter that was death for my time was coming soon, but he was driven away by the presence of the Lord. I quickly recovered and the fever was driven out of me within hours. A few days later she experienced another miracle. A situation had occurred, and she was being asked to take custody of her daughter whom she had not seen in thirteen years. The one major prayer she had asked God for was suddenly answered, once again blessed because of her love for me. Now her tale shall join the others that I draw upon when dark times cloud my faith and blur my belief in the truth. 
That is my latest experience I have to share, but my reason was that this respiratory infection seems to correlate with these issues I have addressed here. God's kid was born inside a barn and put inside a manger. Three wise men rolled up and told his mom his kid here is a super mega power ranger. Groom him to fight Satan. Jesus learned to walk on water, causing Roman soldiers butter. He was thrown on a cross and buried and dug up after three days. Shit. I know the story of Jesus, but who doesn't believe? He's a dark skinned Hebrew albino, and he really loves you. I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 I'm going